For a constant angular speed, the particle has a constant tangential speed, which is the speed tangent to the circle. The relationship between tangential speed and angular speed would be v equals to r omega, where v is the tangential speed, r is the radius of the circle, and omega the angular speed. Okay, so now that you know how to calculate all these, let's look at how we are going to calculate centripetal acceleration. Consider a body moving in uniform circular motion. Remember how we said that velocity is a vector quantity? Well, let's consider a small arc of the object's displacement, and look at the initial and final velocity vectors. If you notice, when we place the tails of the two vectors together, there is a change in velocity. This is represented by the vector that connects the two velocity vectors. We denote this change as delta v, which is also a vector. Notice how delta v points toward the center of the circle, and by manipulation of the sine rule, delta v over sine theta equals to v over sine pi over 2 minus theta over 2. Take note, this is in radians, and note that we are taking a small portion of the circle. Hence, as theta is small, and since it's in radians, sine theta is approximately equal to theta. Also, theta over 2 is much smaller, so sine pi over 2 minus theta over 2 is approximately equal to sine pi over 2, which is basically 1. And putting this all together, delta v over theta equals to v, which implies that delta v equals to v theta. As acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, which is dv dt, and in this case, delta v delta t equals to v theta over delta t. Expressing theta as a length of arc divided by the radius, which if you recall is another special property of the radian, and when we plug it back into the equation, we have v s over r delta t. And since s over r is the velocity, we get the, the centripetal acceleration to be v squared over r.